fear of the light. And Nicodemus has some fear of the light today. The light is the love of God. The light is the shalom that we talk about, the opportunity that each of us have been given to experience, uh, to give and to receive God's mercy and grace uh, and to share that throughout our life. And sometimes that notion of shalom, compassion, mercy, justice, and forgiveness is a, it's a big challenge for us. And it's certainly a challenge for Nicodemus this morning. You see, Nicodemus was a part of the Sanhedrin. He was uh, a Pharisee in his uh, re religious uh, belief, a member of the Sanhedrin, a very powerful guy. He was in that 10% uh, that owned 90% of uh, Palestine. And he is, uh, he's witnessed what Jesus has done around the temple, what he did last week, kind of, you know, throwing stuff around and, you know, causing a stir. He's been aware of Jesus' teachings and preachings, the healing. And what's happening with Nicodemus is that his life is being gradually transformed. He, he, it's what Jesus is talking about, what he's exemplifying is making an impact on the life of Nicodemus. And all of a sudden, everything that he thought he understood as truth is now under profound personal question. It's frightening. It's scary because Nicodemus understands that if he were be, to be able to begin to follow Jesus, his life would radically change. It's a frightening thought. And so Nicodemus, he came to Jesus, he said, I need to talk to you, but I, we can't do it in the daytime. We have to we have to get away somewhere where we can talk and be alone. And so I'm not exactly sure where they ended up, but my suspicion is Nicodemus may have somehow followed Jesus uh, into Bethany over the Mount of Olives and into uh, that town that was a, a place of safekeeping for Jesus and many of his disciples. But in any event, Nicodemus and Jesus have this conversation about what it really means to be part of God's kingdom, what it really means to try to actualize and fulfill the will of God for humanity. And this conversation takes place, and as it does, Nicodemus is beginning to uh, understand a little more clearly. Well, we, we too, like Nicodemus, if we put ourselves in Nicodemus' shoes, they're not exactly the same shoes. We already have a, a faith in Christ. We already understand much of what this is about, but still within our life, within our existence, there, it may be the case that various dimensions of shalom are difficult for us to walk into. We may have a certain type of fear of that type of light. Now, this Sunday, I, I want to focus, I, I, last few weeks, I've been talking a lot about um, justice and uh, compassion, uh, but this week, uh, I'd like to talk a little more about forgiveness, uh, of an important dimension of shalom, and, and the challenge that we all may have from time to time to forgive others. Uh, a fear to walk into that light, a fear to let go of the things that are troubling us in such a way that we judge the other, we're unwilling to forgive the other, and we hold on to that pain, recognizing that we've learned uh, that Jesus said to Peter when Peter asked, was asking him the question, how many times am I supposed to forgive? Seven times? And Jesus says, no. Seven times 70 or seven plus seven. You're supposed to continue to forgive. You are supposed to live a life of forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the call. That's the action. Because when we are able to forgive, we are allowing ourselves to let the other be reborn in a special way. Now, sometimes that's really hard. As a matter of fact, the other day I was talking to someone about this, 
And the person said, yeah, but what about in the case of domestic violence? Sometimes people say you're supposed to just forgive your spouse and continue to live with the person in the midst of all this abuse. And, and that is not by any stretch what we're talking about here. I mean, if you're going through domestic violence, you need to get out. However, that does not mean you don't forgive. Because if we hold on to the anger, if we hold on to that pain, if we don't let it go, we are unable to fully express the shalom that God wants us to. And so sometimes forgiveness is very, very hard. It's a big challenge. But yet it's that next step that we need, need to take. And frankly, it can be frightening. I know in different situations in my life where I've needed to forgive the other, and it was hard. The only thing I could do, really, was to pray to God to give me the strength and the appetite and desire to forgive the other. And then finally, I, I, it might get so bad that I said, God, give this other person all the grace you have for me, because I can't carry this pain any longer. Sometimes it's that severe. Well, the good news back to Nicodemus and his trying to unpack the understanding of Shalom. Uh, what we do know is this. They had a great conversation. A lot of questions were asked and answered. And what we see in John's gospel, and Nicodemus only appears in this gospel, but what we do see is that when uh, the Sanhedrin uh, wanted to condemn Jesus, uh, Nicodemus does speak up and he says, well, at least give the guy a fair trial. Let's hear what he has to say. And this certainly took a measure of courage on the part of Nicodemus to do just that. And then finally, we see Nicodemus after Jesus dies, he uh, goes to the tomb and brings uh, expensive burial spices that are used to treat uh, the body. And so we see Nicodemus making these moves, starting to come out of the dark and into the light of Christ. We don't know much more about it, but I think it's reasonable to assume that Nicodemus began to follow Christ uh, in, in, uh, in this sort of thing. And, and so, he confronted his fears and began to take those next steps forward. Now, for us, the challenge remains to, uh, to find a way to let go of the individual, to, to begin to forgive the individual, and to recognize that God is there for us to help us in that endeavor, that it is not always easy, but the Holy Spirit is always coming to you to help us actualize that prayer that Jesus taught us. It's something that we can do with the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. This forgiveness is possible, although sometimes, admittedly, it's very hard. And so my prayer for you today, my friends, is that you recognize those aspects, those individuals or situations in your life that require forgiveness, and that you ask God to help you do that. And as you do, what you will find it might be a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears, but what you will find as you move through that journey, you will find a peace that surpasses all understanding, and it will help guide your next steps as the disciple of Christ, sharing God's love with the world. Amen.